<laughs> okay, cool. Wonderful. Welcome to Chicago Ions, everyone. I'm Diane Willis. This is March 9th, 2024. And we are doing something different today. We are having um, a pre-recorded lecture on the Akashic Records with our good friend, Elena Lieberman, which we did yesterday. And then at seven o'clock tonight, you are all welcome back for a discussion with Elena. And you can ask any questions and uh, anything that's come up for you. You can talk about it tonight at seven o'clock. So you should all have the second Zoom link on the email you received about the meeting today. And we're looking forward to seeing you back at that time. Before we go any further, we want to take a few minutes for a short meditation. Uh, if you have things on your lap, you might want to put them aside and get yourself in a comfortable, relaxed position so that you can allow yourself to go within and go to the source. Allow yourself to breathe deeply and gently. Welcome back. Um, briefly, uh, I, I need to just put in a quick plug for some donations. Uh, we got uh, $30 last month on the, uh, through the Zelle. Uh, it doesn't begin to pay our monthly expenses. It's 70 to something dollars to send the emails and uh, $50 for the line, for, uh, actually 55 for the Chicago Lions phone line, on and on. So um, we aren't covering our expenses. We still have a little bit left over. 
somebody is trying to reach me and I don't, I, I've never discovered how to turn those phones off. I can turn off my cell phone, but I, I can't turn those phones off. And Sorry about that. But that's the way it goes. Um, in any case, um, if you go to chicagoions.org and go to donate, there are ways there that tells you how to donate if you if you would be interested in doing that. Um, we have a wonderful speaker next month. Some of you might have heard him. His name is Randy Rogers, and Randy spoke, I think, in 2011, and he uh, he has a, a, an absolutely wonderful book called The Key of Life, and has had amazing experiences. He was the president of Telefilm, which is a big film company in Culver City, California, that does a lot of the um, advertising for movies and all kinds of things. And then he moved to Oregon, and uh, his story is just kind of breathtaking, and he's a wonderful, wonderful person. And he's thrilled to be back to speak to us again next month, and I know you'll enjoy him. Um, and um, we're going to go in to uh, our video now. Um, Elena Lieberman, I first met in 95 and um, have had some wonderful experiences with her over the years and enjoyed her friendship and her sister Ronnie, who's with us today also, who spoke for us about mandalas that she does. Um, and I know she has a, a very uh, big following here. I think she's kind of looking at seven o'clock this this evening as a reunion she's hoping to see a lot of a lot of her friends and and find out what they're doing and so on and so forth as well so it should be a, a jolly time uh, Elena is exceptional uh, she's one of the clearest channels that I know in terms of being able to uh, connect with the other side without influencing what she hears with her own personal information. Uh, that's a difficult thing to do, and a lot of psychics and intuitives have problems with that. But she is exceptional, and um, I know you're going to love her. So, Vicki, let's go with it. So, we're putting on the video now. This will all be online, as will the 7 o'clock tonight meeting eventually after in a, within a day or two here we go I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today and I want to thank you so much because while I was waiting to go on I want you to know that scenes flashed back with so many people who are in Chicago Irons. And I really haven't lived in Chicago for about 16 years, but it brought me back to the earlier times of my training with Mary Parker. The first class I went to was at the Bismarck Hotel in downtown Chicago in 1990. And when I saw Mary, to me, she was like a ball of light. And I walked up. And she said, she paused and she looked at she said, I believe I will. That's how she taught. She was an extremely down home person. And it was amazing to me that she could take esoteric comments, comments coming from a very high place, and make them very loving and comfortable. Almost like you were sitting in her house, which later I did, and having coffee with her in the kitchen. 
she had that facility of warmth and it was deeply a facility of grace. So that when she gave you a consultation, I really feel this in my heart. And somehow I want to impart this to you in our brief time together with all my friends. I'm so glad to be back with my friends here. We sat up there and you could be pretty troubled. <laughs> you could have questions about big issues in your life, but it was like she was holding hands with you. One side, like walking through the forest and then you walk through and suddenly you were on the other side and there was a clearing and somehow a burden was lifted off of you and you had a different insight. You were not the same as before the consultation one hour ago, but it didn't seem frightening. It never seemed judgmental and it always seemed loving. And I want to make that point today when we reflect on this work, which is really uh, a different level of consciousness that we bring forward. And we've made a lot of progress in 34 years with a lot of different interpretations of the material. I remain true to what is our key today, the original teachings of Mary Parker, who I loved. But there was a love that was so significant. People think, they, they come in and they say, oh, I'm prepared. Tell me the worst. I want to hear my karma. I got to make up for it. It's never like that. There's a lot more love and gift that is truly present for everyone. I can't emphasize that enough. You can feel how things got overlaid and filtered over the years. And we can lift that off now. We can really do something with that now so that you get the pure essence, your state of being, your inscription from the divine of your inner divinity that is there. You don't have to do something to be aligned with it. It is your innate, authentic self. So today also, I'd like to make it like a little mini class. We will be doing share. So let's start off with a definition of the Akashic Records in the understanding that I've come to with a few uh, other interpretations. So I'm gonna go to share and pull that up for you. The Akashic Record is referred to as the recording of all of existence in a unified, underlying, refined, energetic field running through all there is. It is known as a spiritual archive of all things that exist in the subtle landscape of being. In the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, an early theosophist publication, it is written, this Akashic record is of such exquisite fineness that even in ether, anywhere in the cosmos, registers an indelible impression in it. This unified field is composed of the Akasha, a Sanskrit word for the energetic substance from which all life is formed. The Akashic Record is referred to in every major spiritual teaching, including both Old and New Testaments, such as the Book of Life and Judaism, and also held in high esteem in the Hindu tradition. By learning to access the Akashic Record, the key emerges to unlock spiritual growth and development opening the way to transform light through profound insight for those who seek inner direction. What I've come to realize over 
a fairly long time is that the field or the unified field as the famous physicist Irvin Laszlo has written about, that field number one is created next to through and next to divinity. That's one part of it. It's very, it's a very highly refined field in many ways. Something that most people don't know is many of you, for instance, are familiar with numerology. The term is numerology in English. In Hebrew, the word is gematria. That means numerology. Through research, we found out that the word akasha is the equivalent numerology or value as the word ale or made, which means God made. When you see these equivalents, what you find out is that it's definitely a way or a path of unification within yourself and beyond, like harmonics that fit together. So we know that this is something that's very deep and related to your soul. So that was somewhat unusual information that was brought forward actually in preparation for a summit that I did a year and a half ago. My personal experience in watching the evolution of the work we do in the Akashic Records has brought forward a realization that the field, the energy field of grace, grace, that unconditional love, that force that can come through as you lift off your personal holdings of the energy, your pattern, is very aligned with the Akashic records. In other words, if I take one hand with the records prayer open, moving into the records, and I say to the masters of the Akashic records, show me the field in a way that I can understand of the Akashic records. The feeling, which I'm familiar with after hundreds of consultations, just bring the feeling up, just bring the vision up, just bring that light up, let me step into it and hold it. So I hold it. Then if I say to the records and the masters, I say, show me the field of grace from the divine. Bring forward that field of unconditional love. And I move into it because I'm shown that. I want to be bathed in that field of unconditional love. What I find is that it's almost the same. It's almost the same thing. So that explains a lot of things because Edward Com Comney, who was a protege of my teacher, Mary Parker, began to develop what he called grace points through the three prayers. Now, actually the three prayers of grace, there's three prayers of grace that were actually taught to Mary Parker by her teacher, Johnny Prochaska, but they're not exactly the same as they are today. And also we can change them a little bit. We don't have to say them exactly. And we'll talk about that shortly. So all of that is very aligned to bring us into an unjudgmental truth coming from where, coming from our soul. When, I, when we see things in an elevated soulful position, and many of you who are listening today have seen that, that is the nature of the near-death experience. That is the nature of what we call out-of-body experience, that we see worlds that are of higher light. We know the love. We come into a profound understanding of layers of grace, of layers of love. And we see plans coming from that love. We see the plan for this life in a sense. When I say we see, that 
can mean a lot of things to different people, but we perceive it. So we know that there is this thing called grace that has the power to completely bathe and elevate us into a perspective that could be life-changing and really could be unprecedented. When people have these experiences, they're not aware that, oh, no, I'm going to have this experience and I'm dying. No, they, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It, it does something to get you, to grab you. We experience that in our conscious mind as you, you don't know this is going to happen. You may get inklings, some get inklings, but we don't know. And there's a reason for that. It's so everything stops and you become fully present. You become present with what's going on. Whoever that you is, in the moment that it happens, you are right there. You're not somewhere else. If you do for a moment see the other world, that's a little distant when you're out of your body. Oh, oh there's my body down there. Where am I? You know, that you're in a different presence. And that is very important for realization and letting go of the past. I mean, you have to look at this phenomena of the out of body or what we call revelation. Out of body experiences are moments of revelation. Time stops. You don't know how long. How many people have said, I don't know how long I was there or it seemed like I was there forever, or it seemed like I was there for a flash, yet I knew, what did you know? What was there? So I'd like to bring a picture up right now. And this is a picture uh, uh, that's really very interesting. It's a unique picture. This is a picture. Uh, a a picture called Grace of the Heavenly Light. Grace of the Heavenly Light. It's by an artist named Orit Martin. Um, and it shows you the deep purification of grace. The woman is walking into a waterfall of light. And you'll notice the shading of this. We have golden light, which is sacred light of the higher world or the higher holy city. And it's pouring in, in a waterfall of white light. And on the sides are the crown, the crown chakra in amethyst. And the woman is walking in to be bathed in it. So it shows the power. Now, what it, the picture is not showing is What's going on inside of the woman? The same thing is going on inside of the woman because at this level, what is internal is also external. It is a transcendent field. The usual boundaries are not there. The more the boundary, the more the walls of the vessel, the denser the world. So she's stepping in out of this world for this complete revelation of grace, but you can see the force, the power of it, and how high it is from this amazing depiction. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at grace, but before we do, I want to pause and bring up the qualities of the prayer we use that accesses the Akashic records. Now, in my lineage, we hold the prayer sacred. We don't uh, print it for the public. We print it in our material. We hold the copyright for it because we know the power of those sounds. The power of the sounds of that prayer have to do with the sequencing of those sounds in English. When said together in a certain way, they are the key that access 
the field, the frequency layer of the Akashic records and hold it there. So some of you may be saying, you know, I'm a healer and I'm going to tell you, I go into the Akashic records. I can put my hand through the auric field and I'm in the records. I'm in the records here. I'm in the records there. And there will be other people who will say, well, I, I'm, I know I'm accessing the records uh, sometimes when I talk to my guides. I know I'm accessing the records when I have a vision. And I would like to introduce the fact that it's probably true because we do move in and out of that harmonic. We do move in and out of that frequency all the time. The difference when we pursue taking the classes taking a good look at our consciousness, what is needed inside of ourselves to maintain that connection. What does it feel like? What do I get now? What do I get later? All that exploration is done so you go directly there. I'm here. I'm not going to move a little bit over here because that doesn't feel the same way. I don't see things the same way. So you're fine tuning in a class. That's why we teach it in the way that we do. So first of all, the prayer that we use, just briefly, the first thing we do in the prayer is call forth God's truth of what is and love. There's a shield that happens as you travel through the energetics into the Akashic breath. We use something called a shield, and it is actually a divine-centered, a God-centered shield. That's the first thing that we call forth. The next levels to the prayer, and there are many hidden levels that you learn as you use it over the years. The next levels bring forward the observer self, which is the beginning of the higher self. The observer self is a more neutral self. It's a more loving self, yet it's neutral. It's there to get the information. It's there to get the information that is being brought forward in any way that is the right way for the soul using it. When I say the right way, it's for that person. There is no one right way. It can be pictures. It can be what you hear. It can be feelings. It can be vibrations. It can be songs. It can be music. All of that we consider information. And we're led to observe it. And as the observer self grows, what happens is you begin to look at the energy under the energy. You began to look at the energy coming up something's here on the side. We're talking about one thing, but there's something else right here, right behind it. What is it? So it's, a, it's an in-depth, interdimensional cultivation of information. And the last area I want to cover today is what actually happens is after that, the teacher self comes forward. It's a self that is beyond time and space. It's a self that looks at the wisdom and suddenly knows all wisdom. It's beyond intuition, it's beyond self-definition, and you remain suspended in awe that you're here to teach, that you're here to learn. Teaching and learning are very, very similar. So you're here to share, you're here to move into this highest vibrational field, the teacher's self. And that's where you engage other people as well as yourself. We urge everyone to keep a journal. The journal helps you navigate. The journal, as I bring out in my book, the, the process of anchoring the abstract worlds. When you write in the journal, number one, you have to stay present to write. And number two, you're bringing abstract and you're manifesting it into the physical. It's not getting stuck somewhere higher up. It's, it starts the flow of coming through. So what um, I'd like to do right now is to bring up the three prayers. And this is, this is a little bit in the classroom that we have right now. I'm going to talk about the three prayers. These three prayers we can give to people 
they are for the public. However, our Akashic Record Consultants International does have a copyright. And we just ask that you honor this. So here we have the three prayers, and these are basically prayers of grace. These are things we would bring up in the consultation. The first prayer is a prayer that comes in different forms in different people's practices, and also, I might say, in religions. There are prayers like this in holy books, in prayer books. Um, it reminds many clients of mine of the hope of, oh no, they, they do that for other disciplines. But this term forgiveness, what I found is that forgiveness is very misunderstood. And here's how people often misunderstood, misunderstand it. Here's the first. I know I should forgive them. I forgive them, but I, it was really terrible. You know, I, I can forgive what happened, but uh, I never told them about it. It's really something that I can't deal with. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is a willingness, whether a person is right or wrong. They, they might be accountable for their actions. It means that within the patterns of my psyche, within the patterns of my energy, within the pattern of my soul, I am going to take this connection, this thing that was done many times to me, and I, I can't handle it anymore. It stays in my head. I can't handle it anymore. And I'm going to lift this out and give it to something that's infinite. Now, that something that's infinite can be whatever you believe in. You can call it the universe. You can call it the divine. You can call it the great mother. Hmm. But it it's something that creates from nothing. And it it's bountiful. It's without end. So that means the potential for how that energy is going to be configured. You lift it from your style, so to speak, on all levels, and you're going to give that sacrifice of energy over and just be bathed, absolutely bathed in this wonderful thing that we call grace. So the prayer goes like this. If there is anyone or anything that has hurt me in the past, knowingly or unknowingly, I forgive and release it. Now, the way this has changed since some of the early classes is you can put someone's name. You can put a name in there. So you're going to forgive so-and-so, and you can use that name. If I have hurt anyone or anything in the past, knowingly or unknowingly, I forgive and release it. And you breathe. If I have hurt myself in the past, knowingly or unknowingly, I forgive and release it. This said 32 nights in a row, has been known to release tremendous amounts of energy. But let me call to your attention, by far after seeing a lot of consultations and myself, the hardest thing to do is to forgive yourself. People will recall that long after life has gone on. What I did, I don't know why I did it. I, I can't let go. I can't let go of that hurt. I can't do it. Well, as you work with it, there is a way, and we'll go through that at the end of these. We're going to do a little meditation about that. But there is a way to let go. So what's left is a total openness to receive divine love, which is much more powerful than anything else, even anger. I want to tell you something that happened to me last month with this. Uh, every month, when you belong to the uh, Arki organization, and we, we do have monthly meetings. You know, years ago, we used to have it at my house every month, like uh, 30, 
I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, people would come and we'd have a practice. Well, now it, it's a perk every month on Zoom. We have people getting together to do consultations or group work. So anyone can bring forward a question. So last month, even after all this time, I had something, I don't remember uh, what my question was, which is important in the story. I don't know, something bothered me. I brought it to the group. We were about to do the grace. I mean, I'm so used to it. I was moving into this prayer. And do you know what happened? Blank. Everything went blank. It was gone. I, I just sat there. And yes, I know there will be some who say, ah, oh, she's having a, a senior moment. She just went blank. Nothing's there. Some will say that. And then one of the other people said, no, it's lifted. Nothing's there anymore. You're still. And I sat there with the stillness. And let me tell you, I don't remember the question. I just remember the piece. Just last month. I don't know what the issue is. It can have. It can be lifted out of you. The floodgates of love can open for you. It really does work. So that's our forgiveness prayer. And now let's take a look at the prayer for releasing outside influences. This is very important. And it's very important because it's always significant, but it's important because of the times. And let's face it, we're bombarded with frequencies. We're bombarded with what we're doing right now, the frequencies from the computer. All kinds of stuff is going on in the world way beyond what was going on even 10 years ago, everything's more sophisticated. It's not yours. Many things are not yours. They could come from a different setting. They could come from your office with two employees uh, having difficulty with one another. And you're just in it, you know, it's all around you. We were asking to have it lifted. Let's give a third quality to it. Many people listening here today are very sensitive. That's why they're attracted to these types of things, this kind of experience. They are empathic. We use this prayer to let go of the energy that we have absorbed uh, from a client, from someone we healed, from relatives, from the ancestry, you can start to let it go. If what I am experiencing is not mine, may God's spirit source now say what mean everything, make it real for yourself. If God's spirit source doesn't mean anything to you, then say what does mean something. Some people may say the one true and living God, and some people may say the one, and some people may say spirit and um, universe. May the universe have his shield around me, and I release whatever it may be to him, asking for the highest good. If you want to say her, in this case, you can, like the mother. So it's a sense that you're releasing the energy and repeating it. Now, a couple of key points around this that were called to my attention this past week. Again, children or children who are not yet born are in the energy field of their mother they're in the energy field of those who are close, and they're in the energy field of the higher worlds. All of that is in the embryo, in the fetus. They're much more empathic. They have no boundaries. The, uh, the boundaries are not yet formed in this for this dimension. So keeping that in mind, I'll give you a story I heard uh, less than a week ago. 
a clergyman who does counseling had a woman come to him uh, for help. She had a number of children. She brought with her a daughter who had special education classes. She did well in the classes, but the daughter was mm -hmm. deaf and mute. And she came to the clergyman and she said to him, there is no history of this in the DNA. I have no idea how my daughter came to this. There has to be a spiritual reason. I am asking about it now. And the clergyman thought, and thought, well, um, I don't know. He didn't say that. He, well, he did have a degree in psychology as well as his other uh, certifications. And then he was led to ask this question. And I mean, he was led. He didn't know. What was happening when this daughter was within you, in utero, a fetus? What was going on? And the woman got all upset. And she said, oh, you wouldn't believe what was happening then. Here I had children, I was pregnant, and we couldn't make the rent. They were going to evict me. And I, I went up to the landlord, he didn't hear me. He didn't give me the space. He didn't let me talk. He was so intent, he was so cold. He was ready to evict me and just cast me out. He said, you come up with the money? And I said, I'll pay you what I have, please. There are other children. I'm about to have a baby. Can't you hear me? Can't you listen to me? He didn't. She had to leave. She had to go on. The baby is born. Can't be heard. Her words are not being received. The question becomes, then what happens? This was not a clergyman who uses the prayer, but he did say that the child began to improve. And he did not follow up. So let me say this now with this prayer. And I also bring up the point in the book. Now, my book is not about accessing the Akashic records. However, all the stories in the entire book, book are built with, through the Akashic records. We can go to the core of the psychological presentation. In other words, psychology is very important, but beyond that is an energy template that will affect the formation of the psyche. And that energy template comes from your ancestral influences. It can go back thousands of years, and that can be up to be cleared in the present. That can work for you ancestrally. The second point is in Arki, we don't say if there is or is is or are not past lives. We're, we give examples of different things that are beyond our consciousness in our present personality. They seem very, very deep. And often they're not of this world. It's up to you to determine if that's past life or if it's a level of transcendent consciousness that is not bound by the incarnation of your personality. In other words, it's so deep that it seems to be coming from another vision, another world. We don't know 
We don't really know because we are multidimensional beings, especially if we emphasize essence or soul, which is constantly in the present. It's holographic. When we look in the records, it's not this happened first and this happened second. It's not like that. It's everything. We use the question format to draw out any level that will come forward in the present because the question focuses in the vastness of the field. So that's how it works. And when we release outside influences, anything that is not your pure, authentic self coming from your soul starts to lift off. And we do need to repeat that. So it's very powerful when you use it and breathe. Now, in my case, some of the stuff just comes off and with some people too. But let me say that some people need to repeat it or different things come up and we need to repeat it. So that's a little something about the second prayer. And quickly, I want to go to this third prayer. And I'll give you a good story about it. Here we have Father, Mother, God, Spirit, Source, saying something that just has meaning to you. We ask that this energy pattern, soul, and you name it, the energy pattern of being angry at so-and-so, the energy pattern of um, not regarding what I'm feeling, whatever it is, you can name it. Or it might be an entity, which is kind of energy that's not yours that attaches to you. You would say that. Or it could be a soul that is not supporting you. This is not about communion with the soul that elevates you or energy that elevates you. If something isn't supporting you, what we're going to do is ask that it goes on its spiritual evolution for the highest good and mutual benefit of everyone concerned. So there's no pushback on this. We just go oh, on, it's fine. We support you to evolve. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. very effective. It doesn't come back and try and get you. It doesn't get stuck on the other plane. There's all kinds of things to, out there to deal with this. It's very effective. You just go, yes, you're free to move on your evolutionary path. There's an interesting story around this. We used to go to Argentina. When I say we, I traveled with my sister, Ronnie, because in the beginning, Mary said, your sister is to travel with you and work with you because Ronnie, my sister, has the balancing energy to you. And together, you're, you're like a whole. And then she said, if you girls have anything you have to work out from childhood, you better do it now because you're in for some big trips. And so we did. We had a good relationship before, but anything we had disparities on, Ronnie and I worked out and then we traveled a long time together and we still prefer to do classes together after all these years. So we'd go down to Argentina and the way the format was is we would be booked with one consultation after another and then we would have classes over the weekend. So I believe it was Ronnie who had a woman who came to her and the woman said, I know that I have attached energy. I feel it hanging in my throat and Many times when it's in the throat, it's also in your heart. Your heart's not open in the real way that's meant for you. She said, I feel it. I can feel it. So they did a consultation. And then she was asked to say this prayer. So the woman started coughing. They, they were rushed water and the woman could not stop coughing. And finally they had to go out on the balcony. And not only that, she was burping. She was coughing, coughing and burping. And this energy started coming out and suddenly she took a deep breath and suddenly she took the water and she her shoulders dropped. And she said, I'm open 
after months, I'm open. It's not there anymore. So she was free of that attachment, that attached energy by repeating and breathing through this prayer. So it was very effective. So we use this when we do consultations many times. Now, what I'd like to do at this time is a little, uh, a little meditation. So just lean, let's lean back. And what we're going to do is to learn to create from the light. You know, most of the stuff we do in our personalities, we don't always want to be like this, is that we react. We react. The closer the person, the more we react. You know, what are you doing this for? I don't want to do it. I told you, you know, the whole thing. So we can center ourselves, align ourselves to learn to create from the light. So let's just close our eyes. Let's take a nice deep breath. A nice deep breath means that it's it's really around your waist, lower body, meditative breathing. And exhale and take another breath. And exhale one more. Let's come present with our, our focus. Exhale. Now, friends, I'd like you to bring up a scene from any time in your whole life, from day one. One scene where you experienced deep peace and love. And breathe. Breathe into it. It's the breath that gives it life. And start to move into it and relive it. And I'll stop talking for a few moments. Take another breath and immerse yourself into the sea. Now, when you're ready, open your eyes and have a sense with that scene that you can take it like a ball of wonderful energy into one hand, this hand or the other one, doesn't matter. I'm holding the energy of that beautiful moment of peace and love. Now take that energy and bring it to your heart. Go ahead and bring it to your heart and breathe. So your heart really gets that moment. Your heart's gonna open to embrace that light and love. Breathe into it. Let the back of your heart open to it, the front and back. Inhale, so you really know this thing. Your heart knows this. Slowly take your hand away and take the pointer finger of the other hand 
and rest it in the palm of the hand that has the energy from this beautiful sea. This is called your number one race point, and it is your reference point to the light and love. It can change, but when we do all these clearings, this is where we're going back to. We know we've lifted something if we can get back to the scene. And when you create, create from this light, the light of this scene. Mary Parker said, learn to create from the light, then everything around you will be filled with light. This is what we do when we call for, for the grace. This is your personal scene of grace that was given to you from a higher level. So when we clear, when things go on, go into the meditation and bring this forward. Because no matter what the force against it is, it can be lifted out and you can center in this for all of your creations. So I'm just going to uh, share one quote that is about race. And the power of it again, before we move on. When we talk about debt in this case, it can be actual financial debt, or it can be karma, or what we call in our incompletes, things that are incomplete. The life-giving power gives you life. That transforms all debt, no matter what it is experienced as is grace. Grace is the highest level of omniscient energy that sweeps away everything so only one's essence can shine through. No matter how dense or needy, this force transforms planets and people and is the closest unifying tide to return to the inner surge of God, grace's reunion to the omniscient creator. So this talks about the power of the grace work. Well, I'd like to move on quickly to a few things from the book before we do a little consultation with Diane as a demo, when uh, the inspiration from, for my book, what happened was anything but an out-of-body experience. What happened that inspired me to write the book was that I lived in Rogers Park, which isn't a, an out-of-body experience for anyone here. Um, and we lived on a high third floor. And those who know Rogers, the older Rogers Park, uh, know what I'm talking about. And I had to do laundry, folks. You have to do laundry in this world. I took a, what I call the gypsy bag, which was a very heavy, it was a lightweight bag filled with heavy laundry. Had to go back to the back porch. Am I ringing any bells here? And go the circular staircase with the bag of laundry to the basement, open the basement door. On one side are the sheds and the other side are the laundry machines. And you have to put the quarters in. So that's what was happening. I was doing laundry. I had to put the quarters in and go in the bag, open the top, put the laundry in. This is an earthly experience. <laughs> 
But what happened to me was not an earthly thing. What happened to me was suddenly I was uplifted. I moved into a state of revelation doing the laundry. Now that's pretty uh, interesting. And this is not about people doing more laundry. This is about that no matter what your consciousness seems to be to you in your conscious mind, that something else can come in. Some other level can come in and start to work with you that you don't even intend and not on the conscious level. It can start to work with you. So suddenly I was uplifted and the sweeping sense of gratitude started to come in. And, and with the sense of gratitude came a sense of being whole. It was as if I had some places, some tears in the oil field or some openings, fragmentation that suddenly filled in and I was whole and it swept me up into a sense of gratitude. So I ran up back to the third floor. That tells you something right there about the energy. I ran up back to the third floor and I was compelled, and I mean compelled, to pick up the pen and write on every piece of paper, like thank you notes, notes of gratitude. I couldn't say enough about the state. It was like, there was no me. There was the state of thankfulness. I became the state of thankfulness. So the self was not the self, was not there. Very similar to what happened a month ago. It's like when that grace came in, when that forgiveness came in, it was, I wasn't there. I was just still. This had a similar feeling. I wasn't there, but I, I did forgiveness. It was like, hallelujah. The presence has come. The presence, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And I started writing. And I realized that that could manifest in a split second, our time, and it could happen. This could happen. So what was this? I still don't know exactly. It's revelation. My word for it is revelation. Maybe a year from now, I won't have that word. But I can. I know enough to tell you that that can happen with every breath. With every breath, you can have a completely innocent, new, pure situation in your life that you're in revelation. Just like you're taking out of your body. You don't know how you got there exactly, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to have an intention, a plan in your conscious mind. But something very high unites with you. There's still a you, still a you, but that you has changed. And you become a conduit in love for something greater. That, that, that's very big. That's a big principle of manifestation. That as long as you let that flow, let it be, let that flow keep coming, write it out, bring it through this world. You don't need to know every step. When I look back at my book, which was written some time ago, there are things I would do different. There's wording I do differently, orders I do differently, but the gist of the book remains the same, that this can happen. And there are ways to honor it, completely honor it. So I have 13 processes and I have 37 principles in the book, but basically we're working with this flow, the flow of the energetics that you can bring through. So what I'd like to do is to begin with another little um, exercise from the book. And this is dealing with the etheric template. Now around us is like a map and it's in the etheric body and beyond. 
It's a map of how the energy will precipitate, if you use that form of metaphysics, it's going to precipitate into this material dimension. But it's not that difficult to see. For example, right now, we can uh, you can take your two hands and put them together. Some of you may done, have done this. And look down. If you can get something kind of plain behind it, it helps and pull your hands apart. Well, some of you will immediately see the auric field between the two hands, but you'll also see like taffy. Looks like taffy. And you can go back and forth, you know. We can, some people will be able to see it right now on the screen. We can see it. That's your etheric field, and around it is your etheric map. And then it goes out from there. You can see it. And let me tell you a, a very fun thing to do is if you have plants at home, look around the edges of the leaves of the plant, not the plant itself, and you will see the etheric template of the plant. If you, you cut a leaf, you'll still see the projection of that leaf for a while. That etheric template is still there for that leaf. And likewise, if you want to watch your plant grow, it will project. The place where the leaf will grow will be projected against the line, uh, against the back wall, and you'll see the leaf fill into it, the physical leaf. So this is projected without limit. It's only as much as your consciousness can take in. That's your personal personality consciousness. And here's the key right here. We live in a symphony. Diane, we live in a piece of music. It has no end. It's built on resonance in the unified field. Over the holiday season, I was sent a video as to what science is doing with this. They now have machines that measure halfway across the world, when people are thinking, meditating, and praying, they can set an intention of love. The machine that's halfway across the world can tell you the minute that group of people that's located very far away start and stop, it can measure the amount of love. And when the people are in tune together, they can feel it halfway across the world. And you'll see tremendous emotional reaction and response to that. What is that? What is that? It means our consciousness is opening, but it also means we're profoundly interwoven. That all of that can manifest. That we can draw down in amazing ways in positive ways from the collective. And furthermore, we're given ways and grace. If there's something stopping that, we can let it go. We can completely let it go and reconstitute our physical bodies to hold a higher frequency, which we're working with in the record. So I want to just go on to one little vignette in the book, which is actually halfway, and it's even kind of funny. It's kind of a funny story about how people happen to find these qualities. Now, the book has these little parables in it. The parables are not about one client. I want to make that very clear. They're a mixture of clients and also myself, things that I... I went through in my life. Some are out of the body experiences. But halfway through the book is this kind of fun story about a beautiful girl in the South. She's from Savannah. And she starts modeling at the age of 13. Her father's very affluent. He owns a financial business. And she's really, as she grows older, she becomes like a trophy, she could be a trophy wife. She's very hotly pursued. But she meets a guy named Lewis. And Lewis 
when they talk, really listens to her. It, it's very clear that he receives something else about her. That's not what she looks like, that he's listening from another level. So she really loves that. She, she seems to honor it. And Louis and Deidre is her name. Louis and Deidre get married. So Deidre says, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry. You know, you'll go into my father's financial business. He always needs people. So Louis goes into the business and he doesn't do very well. Suddenly this ideal husband isn't so ideal. So Deidre said, well, you go, to, you go to college, major in business, and then you'll be able to understand it. Well, sorry, Lewis goes, and he practically flunks out. Not going well. So her father, Arthur Sr., says to Lewis, listen, listen Lewis, I can't keep supporting you. You're going to have to do some work here. I will give you a folder with the script, the script that we hear all the time on the phone, you know, with the script that you are to memorize so you can handle these sales calls because I can't have you go out and, and never make a deal. Lewis tries to memorize it, but then he can't close because close involves salesmanship and that's not who he is. So Arthur Sr., Calls in his main guy, flies out to close the deal. And suddenly it's not going well. Nothing really helps Lewis. And Arthur Sr. is very upset. He spent all this money, flying the salesman out, all the whole bit. In the meantime, Deidre and Lewis have had children, and there's a little boy named Arthur Jr. And Lewis loves the little boy. And together, do you know what they do? They build a tree house, a tree house. And little Arthur is four years old and they take a log and that's, that's the plank that leads up to the tree house, which is a pirate ship. And they run up there. And little Lewis is all excited. And he thinks it's the funniest thing. He's four years old. Everything's so funny. And Lewis is in heaven in his treehouse and in his pirate ship. And they're running around and the ocean is thrashing. And suddenly, next door, the golden retriever runs out to, to see Lewis, his friend. And he comes bounding out. His name is Lincoln. And Lincoln comes bounding out and, and Lewis says to little Arthur, he says, oh, a sea monster, a sea monster Lincoln. And they get all of a sudden, they're running and running. And, and Lewis says to his little boy, abandon ship, abandon ship. So he goes running down and he starts climbing down the log and here comes the golden retriever and he, jumps up to give Lewis a kiss and knocks Lewis down. And Lewis doesn't clear his leg from under the log and it twists 180 degrees and he has a broken leg. Wow, he's in a lot of pain. The dog doesn't know what to do. He paces back and forth. Deidre comes out and realizes she has to call the ambulance. And finally he's taken to the hospital. He's taken to the emergency ward where he has to wait to see the doctor. But in the meantime, a nurse comes up. Now at that time, nurses were allowed to practice in hospitals. They were allowed to practice healing touch. So she comes out, she says, he's in pain, waiting. And she says to him, you know, there's something I know how to do, which could help you. And Lewis says, yeah, what is it? I'll do it. And she says, it's called healing touch. So she starts and raises her hands, doesn't touch him. And suddenly there's an energy. Now in healing touch, you can touch a little bit physically, but something happens to Lewis. Something is happening to Lewis. Because in healing touch, you lift the layers of the field off and out of the body to heal each one. 
and Lewis's consciousness moves from one level to the next. And suddenly Lewis is hovering above his body and he sees his soul group. He sees them and they're very close and there are a lot of them. And they're filled with love. They're not dense, they're part of him. And they love him. There's a perfection from his soul. He loves the feeling. He has no pain. He's calm. And he stays there. And then she clears the bodies out. And she brings him back into alignment. Into alignment. And suddenly, Lewis is very aware. Lewis has found Lewis. And he's alive. So it comes back, healing going on, physical healing. The doctor comes in and he heals. He wants to tell Deidre about it. Deidre's response is, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I've had it with you. You can't do anything. You can't work for my father. You can't memorize the scripts that we give you. You can't make a living. And now you're telling me that you went and saw your, what was it, people? Sober? What, what are you talking about? I, we can't live. That does not put money on the table. This is practical living. Woo-woo time. Woo-woo. He says, no. No, this is real. Well, he was al allowed to see the children from that point on, but they did get divorced. But in the meantime, by coincidence, Lewis takes coffee in Starbucks and there's an ad in a paper for a chiropractic school. And in the school, they also teach alternative healing. So Lewis really sees that, goes to the school, graduates with honors, takes all the healing classes. And do you know what? He becomes a very famous successful healer because he aligned with his true authentic self. So this is a story it is a combination story about how people become their true self and how they can integrate it and manifest it into the practical, physical reality. So I'd like to, just for the moment, I'd really like to bring this up as a closing note on this section. If you, for any moment, think that the, it's all about attracting to you, that's only, a, it is true, but it's only a piece of it. If you play, if you want to, create a symphony, you don't just create the melody line. You need a bunch of harmonics that harmonize. So here's, here's the concept. Your underlying eternal quality, which is your essence, is designed perfectly to fit your soul and all spiritual levels of your existence. Nothing and no one else can have your internal recognition in depth of your life. What does that mean? It means people don't compare yourself. We're always comparing ourselves. This one does this. This one has money. This one's famous. This one's is so easy. There's, that's meant to be shared. That is meant to be loved. 
but know what is inside of you first and cherish it. To manifest internally and externally the abounding saturated wealth of your personal existence must be cherished first by you. The harmony of this love reverberates spiritual, spiritually, creating complementary vibrations radiating inward and outward, like a musical composition inspired by adoration, true support and compassion fill your universe. So let me say tonight, I really look forward to all your dialogue and contributions, and it will be a lot of fun. And many things can be brought up about the records and about the book. And, and um, I'll cherish seeing some of you. I received calls from old friends before we did this. So I, I really look forward to seeing you all tonight again. And with that, I'm going to ask Diane, uh, to step forward. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on mute so I can say the prayer to open Diane's Akashic Records. And then she's going to ask me a question and we'll see what happens. So if you, I'm going to mute myself. I'm writing Diane's name. In uh, the style that we work with, we must have your current legal name in order to have the permission to open your Akashic records. We never just give that information. You know, it used to be years ago, you go to a party with people who channeled or did healing and they'd say, hey, I'm getting a hit on you. Did you know what I'm getting on you? And you didn't ask them. You know, they just are telling you so we, we don't go there. What we do is ask permission to go into that frequency and that level. So I'm gonna go on mute and I am going to open Diane's Akashic Records. Looks like I'm not on, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to mute. I went on mute, but I'm I'm not getting on mute. Let me mute. There we go. Oh, I just muted you, Elena.
Okay. All right, Diane. I, you know, when I was talking, friends, when I was talking to Diane, I before I said, you know, Diane, you have to have questions be because it's the questions that identify that allows us to focus in the Akashic Records. And I want to tell you, you always learn new things from the Akashic Records. Because while I was opening Diane's uh, Akashic Records, they gave me information to tell her before her questions. <laughs> so, wouldn't you know, so much for that. But we are, we do have a guideline to give all the information that we get. So I can rely on this. So Diane, can I give you some information that some of which you probably know already? But I, it, it's very moving. It moves the heart. Thank you. Um, who? It'll be shared now with other people. It's something you probably know. Um, but others need to understand this and, and interact with it. The first thing that I was shown about Diane was that her flute playing is the prayer. That her flute playing is the language of prayer and the language of the angels. And it's when her soul moves through the layers of the worlds, and including this one, and her soul heard the angels singing, that at that point, she decided that in this dimension, in the material dimension, or this world, that the closest thing she could do so people would hear the angels was to play the flute. And that's manifested in her life. Let me tell you how much energy in the heart that <laughs> I, I just, I just have to get out to you that whatever you do, always attach or always have downloads of your flute playing available to people so they hear the voice of the angels. So they hear prayers. That is prayers in the higher worlds. It, that you knew was that language so humans could hear. And then other forms of creation in this world, like birds. Birds respond a lot to that. And other angelic beings and special flowers, all, all of the creation of the creator world, nature, Nature is important here with the flute. And the next thing that comes in, that's part, just a facet of why the Native American flute was of interest to you. Because there was a, a, a wisdom that those ancient ones knew about the flute coming from all the spirits of nature. That that was the spirit of the nature in the flute and and that goes directly to the heart so if someone wants to hear the heart or feel their heart they need to hear diane's flute because she's the messenger from the high angelic world bringing it to you that's the first piece of information I'm given about Diane Rose today. So having said that, Diane, do you have a, a question you want to take a look at? Um, we were talking. <laughs> um, I started a book about... 10 or 15 years ago and wrote about 50 pages and my guides told me that it was not time yet and so I stopped. Meanwhile, I've been kind of sitting on all this information and many, many stories and things that have happened to me 
And uh, I, I felt like you're not going to let me die until I <laughs> write the book. Uh, but now that I'm getting old, uh, I'm almost 81. Um, I uh, begin. I miss my body is beginning to fall apart, and as we all wear out at a certain point, and I didn't, didn't know if they still intended for me to do this, uh, and uh, what I should what I should do about it. So I've kind of had a question about that. Uh, I've been trying to make it go. I just I'm slower and. Uh, it's harder to make it happen. <clears throat> the imagery of the flute playing does not end, incidentally, but let's go into it now. Part of the associations that you've had over the years, even with um, Chicago Lions, you've been exposed to people who know the mechanics of bringing a book to the world. And that involves a business, a business. So you have some of that, you're connected to some of that for your support when it gets to the practical level. What I'm receiving is number one, remember that when writing a book, the order is not important. You can, you can be writing something that you think is early in the book and it ends up being towards the end of the book. So don't worry about that. What I received from the records is first of all, you are to write a book. But the next thing that I received, second point of information, is that if you really start writing the book, and in between writing, play your flute. The flute is a language. So that what you're doing is putting into other forms. And writing is another form of the divine sound current. Just like I, I talked about declarations in my book, to speak it out loud. Writing is another anchoring of the divine sound current or divine utterances. But what's closer to that current is music. So if you allow yourself to play the flute and also write, what you're doing is translation. Like you're translating from a different language at times. What I'm being shown, I'll share how I see it because it's not, I don't see like numbers. I'm not, some, sometimes I do, but I'm not seeing that. In about two and a half months, you're really to begin to really move into writing this book. The book and really getting into it, and then what you're led to do by making the space. What happens when we manifest, it's like higher up, a space is made because we pulled it through. So more can come in. If you stop, more, it's hard for more to come in. So you want to have that writing, playing the flute, or just playing the flute and later writing. You want to make this space because it's coming from on high so more can come in. So once you get started, and in this, this time there is an intention, I'm working on the book. Don't bother me, I'm working on the book. About two and a half months from now, um, what's going to happen is you're going to get more vital force. So your body, it's not about writing the book before you die. It's about writing the book from the vital force on high. And you're going to be accessing that in a multidimensional way. So the more you, you get down, the more you play the flu, the higher you're going to do. You're going to start recalibrating your body to be working with some other energy source. A higher energy source. It's your energy source. It's divine energy source, but it's on a, a higher frequency level that's meant to come through you. It's not by chance you met all these authors, you met a lot of authors and you know they have publishers and all these kinds of things. So what we want to do is something popped up. Um, 
what we want to do with that is to know that it's like it goes along the way it is and the spacing of it. That's how I see it. it's like spacing. And then at the end of two months, it, it, there's a feeling into it. It changes, like takes a leap. And then that's where you want to really have um, receiving. Be aware of receiving the book. Like you're receiving, um, you hear a song in your mind and you're receiving it. And then you you put the music down. Then you write the music, for instance. It's it's coming to you. It, it's coming to you. They there's a, a lot of love given to you to write the book. The love at this time that's coming to you is the angelic realm um, right. guides. The the reason in your case. You know, in the uh, school, the Akashic Records that I work with, we talk about masters, teachers and loved ones. Uh, we don't use the term, the frequency range of guides. But let me tell you why guides are valuable in your case, in your for your soul. There's a different energy of intimacy when you, for you when you say, God. It's it's a sense of not being abandoned, not being betrayed, trust that has been with you, that the guides, your guides, not guides who are not in touch with who you truly are. It's you still being there, and the guides are going to begin to give you the book. Just be open to how that goes. If it's not proper English yet, not edited yet, you, you can go through it, go to an editor, go to a ghostwriter, you know, whatever you want to do. Don't worry about it at this time. If, if one day you decide to organize the book, do it. Because the guides are giving it to you through your own mentality. And it's like a, a, a musical backdrop. That music is being filtered through understanding of the guide realm into the Diane Willis realm. <laughs> so that's when it's going to pick up. And with it comes energy, refined energy. And sometimes it's going to drop. Sometimes you say, oh, I have, oh I'm going to do this and then oh. sometimes, but other times you're going to be buoyed up by the energy. So you're, you're gearing up to write the book. It's coming through your guts. It's coming through the, the angelic flute playing. And it's come, going to come through higher. There will be some um, beloved levels coming through to you that are very high. And, and you're to write about that. Don't worry. Do not worry at this time of making sense. If it's a few words, keep writing, keep recording it in some way. Some way. Uh, you have a beautiful command of the English language, but if it is not perfect English at the time of reception, that's okay. You'll you'll get there when the question is asked, how do I bring this out to the public? What do I say to the public to receive this? That's not here yet, but, but now you're entering the cycle where you're writing that book. You're, I would definitely... Uh, as soon as you want, and you do do some of this, but people must hear your flute playing now because these are prayers. These, these are the voices of angels. So the downloads, and you I know you have recordings, but say, I, I, I'm getting to say this is a, a prayer for this or for someone or for the angels' voices, whatever comes in, download it and send it to people who are connected to you. Because that's now, that's who you are now. And the tr there's a tremendous gift. Um, some of it was misunderstood in who you truly are in essence. And now that essence is going to step forward more than ever before and lead the way. Um, 
let me go back for one second here. I, I just want to do one clearing at, with a grace point. Uh, I didn't go through the grace points because that, that takes a long time. And we went through the prayers, which are very significant. But let me go right back. I'd like to clear something from the ancestral, just one aspect and explain it that came up right now. I want to take a look again at that second prayer. Diane, you can you can say this. You you may still have it. And you know, uh, after tonight when we talk to everyone, I will send these three prayers out. We can send them to the public. We ask that you honor our Akashic records, but people can see this uh, and have it for themselves. This page. Um, the second one is for the release of outside influences, and I talked about that. Let me take a little water here. Now, many things that we have inherited from our ancestry are very, very beneficial. They're, they're good. They're talents, um, insights, ways of being, positive ethics. Many things are very good. Some things are not as good as other things. So I'm going to ask you to say that second prayer. And look at my hand for a second. I'd like you to hold right here. This is right here. This little skin. Right here, let me get my face. This is your ancestral lineage point. It clears holdings from the ancestral lineage. And the picture that I'm getting, it's a very interesting uh, insight. It's around your mom. Some of your, there are two areas, but one area which curiously has a positive and a negative to it. The positive to it is that your mother, for a variety of reasons, which we'd have to go into in a, in a longer consultation, did not have a good sense of ego boundary. She didn't have good boundaries. There are reasons for it. So we want to clear that aspect, uh, which would be something around violation of boundary. However, not having boundaries also sets a vibrational precedence for being cosmic. No boundary. In the higher worlds, those are worlds that are not as dense and do not have boundaries. Therefore, you can enter into oneness with unconditional love. So in the personality of your mother, that was very confused. From a higher perspective, you can hear the angels. You can hear the higher worlds. You can be very sensitive to the music of the spheres, so to speak. You can hear the beauty of the harmonics in higher worlds. That aspect of mother was, was talent. She was talented. You want to keep that. So let me be clear that anything you experience as stopping you, invading you, keeping you from being who you are, that's what we're sending on. That's what we're sending on. You don't need it. So it's basically your mother's that aspect, which is not the talent. Here's what we're going to say, holding the ancestral. 
If what I am experiencing is not mine, may, and you can say what you want, God, spirit, source, universe, have his shield around me and I release whatever it may be to him, asking for the highest good. And hold, hold your ancestral clearing point and take a deep breath. Kate, if you can see it, would you be willing to say it at this time? So go ahead and say it. If what I am experiencing is not mine, may God, Spirit of Source, have his shield around me, and I release whatever it may be to him, as the highest good. Take a deep breath and let go. Breathe again. You may have to say this. What this will do is open the portal. This is like a portal opening, especially the race points are like little portals. Other things will start to come through related to this to unravel. You may have to say this again and the third prayer on your own. And now what I'd like you to do is that little meditation. Remember the little meditation we just did to access your where the peace of love is? Can you go back and bring up that scene of peace and love in the palm of your hand. Remember we did that, we took it to our heart. Bring that scene up that we took into our heart and just breathe into it, bring that scene up. And let it expand. Can we switch? Has that grace filled scene, can that be placed instead of each issue as it comes up about your mom, or do you need other prayers? So you can work with that on your own. We can process a little more in a longer consultation, but you can work with that. And why are we? Why is this coming forward now? We can ask in the records. Is that have it, any kind of interference, which we can use the third prayer for? Any kind of interference that is perceived as being inside of you or getting to the inside of you, you want to keep sending on so you can allow the higher divine flow to be active in the writing of your book. That, that may include the flute. It may include the, the grace from um, your guides or any other beloved one who comes through. They're all going to be called upon to write your book through you. It, it's you writing the book, though, because it's your conscious uh, ego in a good way. Your conscious ego writing the book. But all of those are consciousness levels that are going to work with you to write this book and are asking to come through right now. So knowing that we're going to call upon them, and if there's any kind of filter, let's call those other everything else filter, we're going to keep sending that energy on its way. It's just energy. We can go higher, and you can go higher. It's like practicing going from a base note to the highest note. You know, there are ex exercises, low, huh? yeah, you go, you practice getting there, you get, get rid of it. You sometimes you have to play everything in between, but we're going to practice that stretch. So all of the music is a refined harmonic chord. That's what we're going for. Now, do we have, do we have time or should we stop at this point? We we have time. We have a little time. And I'd, I'd like to go on with one more question uh, at this time. And remember, everybody, I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. I mean, there will be people I haven't seen in a long time. So please step forward as well as new friends so we can chat together. Normally, the chat is in the two hours, but we're doing a specialty item here. Yeah, so we can set the time aside. Uh, so go ahead, uh, go ahead and ask another question, Diane. Um, I guess I was concerned about um, my health and the 
med the medical things. I, I, I'm living alone in my house, and it feels to me as if I need to stay here. I, uh, I have no interest in being around uh, 200 old people. <laughs> you know, uh, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I, I'm around, I live in a retirement uh, community at different stages, though. <laughs> but um, first of all, regarding the book, regarding the writing of the book, no matter what would happen, uh, there's a great energy for you, everything else to be stable so that you can write the book. And you'll notice I didn't tell you in two and a half years wrote the book. That book can be written in a, even two months. And, and uh, the energy of this consultation, because it to happen faster, because it's purposeful. But the outside is too, a little over two months. So you want to have an area, what, what comes in right now is the stability of being where you are, but also, also places in your house where you really like to nest the most was <laughs> a, a nest, a place where you can write, play your flute, or if you're led to someone else, I see you stand up and go somewhere else. Uh, it might be outside, it might be coming back. Places where you can express. The word express is coming in. So, the expression can be in different forms. That's the implication here. It can be the piano too. Uh, mm -hmm. there, the understanding that music played by different instruments, you playing different instruments, writing, talking, recording, it's like one thing. It's, it's not different. It only, only the vessel changes. The essence, in you is the same. And it's a gifted high essence. So that knowing that the rest is how others perceive you on the outside. So you're you're going to be working. It's interesting because in one sense it's different levels, but in one sense it's not. It's just like that inner string, that inner aligning cord goes very, very, very high. It's very infinite, and you're just finding the languages and expressions and tones coming from this wonderful chord that you're going to bring to the world. All of it, the journey was done in love, even though the journey seemed to him, you know, it was very rich. It's the weaving of the carpet, very rich design, but the, the underlying thread, the chord is the same. So, you're asked to have a sense of security and stability in the house until it, you will be signaled, you will, it will be known uh, that you're to move. Um, they're not showing exactly how. It can, it, it can come forward in different ways. One of the ways they could come forward is a great offer on your house, uh, real estate person. Uh, you know, it's a great offer on, on your house, but um, there's a line, you know, there's a real knowing. It, it's to take in, keep doing that little meditation. It can change. And what it's there for is to keep identifying, am I ready in love? Let me sink into this love. You know, uh, well, a few months ago, there was a student who came to a class and she said, you know, I love this energy because I feel like it buoys me up. It's holding me. It's holding me up and I, I can let go and be held up. Held up by the energy. You know, like, like an inner tube, like a raft. It's holding me up. That's, that's the heavenly sense around. That when you're aligned with yourself, you know what, I'm going to embrace... We actually use this terminology. I'm going to embrace that. I don't want to talk to them on the phone. And I don't want to hear about them. I'm saying, what? They're, they're taking care of them. I'm going to be buoyed up into this music. And I'm going to write from that place. I'm going to play the flute from that place. 
I am improvising from that place. What happens when you improvise? Your book is a divine improvisation. Your music is a divine improvisation. That's Diane Willis. And at least, I, I say it in front of people, but I'm asking you to remember it when something is confronting you and make a decision sooner rather than later to send it on its way so it's not absorbed into your empathic nature because you are empathic. Set that second prayer and the third divests you of the empathetic absorption. So if you think you're taking everything on, which also is, is a, a different face of the influence of your mother. If you sense you're doing that, say the two prayers. Because you do feel. How do we know you feel? We hear most people have heard you play the flute. How do we know that you feel? Hundreds of people acknowledge something they heard in the flute that was beyond their normal comprehension. So I'm saying outright, remember that in at, at all times when you leave here, so you can be held up and say, time to write the book. I'm old, I'm giving that old stuff over to. <laughs> I, I don't have to be old. I heard a beautiful song last night. Uh, you can play it. It was a country western song. You can listen to it. It's called "Don't Let the Old Man In." <laughs> if you don't, if you don't know the age, if you didn't know how old you were or the time you were born, how old would you be? That's a lyric in the song. Don't let it in. Give it all, grace that too. And begin writing your book, playing with the flute, the eternal. That stops time. The moment where time and space stops. You've seen hundreds of examples in this organization. The moment where nothing touches you because you're there, but you're not there. That's your book. That's your musical expression. That's the voice of angels. Stay in your house. It's easier. It's more comfortable. It, the Diane Willis ego is more secure there. And find your key clear spaces that you can work from. That beauty of your soul is cherished first by you. That was the point of showing that. That's where your loving is from. And you're being asked to go ahead, forget the rest, go ahead, and your guides will unite. They'll, they'll be right there. You open your eyes and it's like they're in your face loving you. The love beams, beaming from the face, beaming at you. And there seem to be a lot of them. So go there for your creations for your expression, to be the true artists that you are. It's very important. And it'll be in true, according to the, this moment of the consultation, the opportunity for it to be in full fruition is between two and two and a half months from now, if not soon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. on that, Go ahead. I think I think it's about time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Diane, it's so wonderful to work with you. Uh, I will I am grateful for your love and your support. And Vicki, wonderful to see you again. Oh, that's beautiful to see you. Thank you so much, as always. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The records are now closed. Amen, amen, amen. Blessings to everybody. Thank you. We'll Thank see you tonight. Seven o'clock yeah. Central Time. Seven o'clock Central Time, gang.
Hope to see you guys. Been a long time. Wonderful. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Wonderful. So tonight at seven, you all, we hope to see you all back. Uh, the uh, second Zoom link is in your email down below the first one. And we hope to see you then. And we'll have a wonderful discussion with Elena live. And you can ask all of your questions at that, at that time. So thanks for joining us. And don't forget uh, donations. And don't forget next month is Randy Rogers. Good stuff. But first tonight, <laughs> see you then. Thanks a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody.